Hello, everybody. Uh, today we are in Stuttgart, Germany, the hometown of Porsche, the luxury automaker we all know and love. And today we're driving the brand new 2025 Porsche Panamera plug-in hybrids. The Porsche Panamera was completely overhauled for 2024. And for 2025, three plug-in hybrid models are joining the lineup. So we have the 4E hybrid, the 4SE hybrid, and then finally the Turbo E hybrid, which is the one I'm driving right now. So earlier in the day, we were in the Panamera 4, and the turbo one is really really special but from the outside you know this is a third generation porsche panamera from the outside it doesn't look too too different from how it used to um, there are some subtle changes here and there there's a lot more you know 911 influences in the design which is always a good thing um, but I really love what the Panamera has grown into. If you remember like the first generation Panamera, it was ugly. And I gotta say, it is so beautiful right now uh, in this iteration, it looks great. And honestly, when driving the previous one, I had always thought, how are they gonna improve on this? Cause it's already so good. But for this third generation, they actually did improve on a lot of things. Number one is the plug-in hybrid powertrain. So although Canadian figures for range and fuel economy haven't yet been announced, the new plug-in hybrids should have about 50 kilometers of EV range, which is a little bit better than it used to be. I think the last generation one was like 30 something. Uh, you might see some reports mentioning a range of 90 kilometers. That is a little bit uh, misleading because those are according to the very generous European testing standards. So they're always going to be a bit higher than what we get in Canada. So I'm thinking that we're going to get about 50 kilometers of EV range, which is pretty good. Um, and honestly, the fuel economy has been pretty good so far. I've been getting about 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers in the turbo, but in the earlier one, when we still had a lot of range left in the Panamera 4E hybrid, my fuel economy was down to like 3.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is amazing. Starting with the non-turbo models, those ones are powered by a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 and then added with the plug-in hybrid powertrain. Uh, total system output comes to 463 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. And then moving up to the 4S model, total system output has been upgraded to 536 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. And then finally, the turbo model I'm driving is powered by Porsche's already incredible 4-liter bi-turbo V8, which on its own, one of my favorite engines ever. It is so good, but combined with the plug-in hybrid powertrain, total system output comes to 670 horsepower and 686 pound-feet of torque. And that basically means that you can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in like 3.2 seconds um, and that's pretty crazy so in Canada all-wheel drive is of course standard um, and all Panameras come with an eight-speed automatic transmission honestly everything works together so smoothly and so well and on point and honestly that's not a surprise because Porsche has always set the standard for driving dynamics in this segment and what's most impressive to me about the updates to the Panamera is in the suspension. So like I said before, when I was driving the old one, I've always wondered, you know, like how can they improve on a product that is already so good? So it has this new thing called an active ride suspension and it's standard in the turbo I'm driving now, but it's available in the other plug-in models as well. And what it does is that it basically controls each wheel individually. And that's really cool because it also can change it 13 times a second. So it's reacting immediately to what it reads on the road. And this is really beneficial for a whole bunch of reasons. Number one is that it increases the range between comfort and performance. And like I said before, all Porsches used to do that balance really, really well. And this new active ride suspension makes it even better. So I've been deliberately driving over potholes and sewer grates and stuff. You can't feel a single thing. And that to me is so impressive, especially because this turbo handles so well. So the fact that it can do both that well is really impressive to me. 
So on the comfort front, you can't feel anything, but on the performance end of things, that new suspension setup really helps as well. And so driving it around these, these twisty mountain roads, it kind of like leans into a corner a little bit like a motorcycle does. And it's actually a little bit spooky the way it works because the body remains completely flat. No matter like what situation you're in, there is no body movement. And already Porsche was so good at that. So to me, it's super impressive that they were able to improve in an already good thing. Um, and the result is that this Panamera Turbo drives brilliantly. Not only is it ridiculously fast, but it's also insanely comfortable and handles like a divine creature that God just gave to us. So that's how good it is. I am really impressed and I really love this Panamera Turbo. So the reason this new active ride suspension is only available on the plug-in hybrid models is that it requires a lot of electricity to use because of all the computing power it needs. And so the regular Panameras aren't available with this. But going back to the plug-in hybrid system for just a second, everything has been improved over the previous generation model. So not only is the battery the same size, but it's more energy dense. Um, it also charges faster, so you can basically get a full charge in about two and a half hours, which is awesome. So as far as the interior goes, they've made a bunch of little improvements as well. This is actually the first time you're able to get the three screens set up in the Panamera was with this generation. Um, that means that the front passenger gets their own touchscreen um, and it's blacked out so the driver can't see it, which is nice because it means fewer distractions. And when I first drove it, I kind of thought it was a little bit gimmicky, like I didn't really see a use for it. Um, but then we took it on a bit of a road trip and it was really nice that my passenger was able to find radio stations and stuff while I was still able to look at my maps. And so it did end up being a lot less distracting. Um, some of the other updates inside are the new gear selector placement. So it's now to the left of the steering wheel. It has a little toggle that they basically took right from the Taycan. And that frees up a little bit of room on the center console, which is really nice. Um, I also feel like visibility has been improved as well. Um, I like these skinny A-pillars and this little window here really helps with visibility. Um, but honestly, there's not too many surprises. So something else that's really nice is that, you know, stuff like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are now standard. Um, there's also a wireless charger that is standard now, thankfully. Um, and they've actually increased the amount of safety equipment that they're offering, which is nice because they always used to charge extra for that kind of stuff. So the fact that they're offering it standard is a huge improvement. So in terms of pricing, they're obviously not going to be cheap because they're Porsche vehicles. So the entry level plug in hybrid model, which is the four, starts at one hundred and twenty nine thousand bucks. And then the turbo one is going to set you back about two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars before any options or any taxes or destination fees are included. And I say this every time I drive a Porsche, but somehow that huge number feels worth every penny. You know, their attention to detail in here is great. The driving dynamics really set the benchmark for every other sports sedan and executive sedan in this segment. Um, and especially with this new active ride control, I love it. It's spooky and magical, and it honestly makes this thing drive so well, whether you're just casually cruising around or you're bombing through back roads, it's able to balance comfort and performance in a way that I've never really felt before. And so that's the kind of innovation I love to see from Porsche. Uh, and I can't wait to drive this on a longer test at home so I can report back to you about better range and fuel economy numbers. Thanks everyone for joining me. This was a lot of fun driving Porsches around in Stuttgart in its hometown. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Um, but thank you so much. Bye everybody.